Hello, welcome to another episode of X-Ray Tips and Tricks. Today, we're going to be talking about counterfeit detection. The counterfeit detection topic became huge news about 10 years ago when uh, a couple of senators, Senator Brown and Carpert, went to Congress uh, to raise the level of awareness uh, to the risk of counterfeit components getting into the supply chain, especially military and aerospace supply chains. Big risk if a counterfeit component ends up in an aircraft or a milita military platform, uh, a malfunctioning like uh, a malfunction can have drastic, drastic consequences. Uh, as a result, uh, the uh, level of um, law enforcement uh, has raised, and several people have have actually gone to jail because they had either manufactured or supplied uh, the military and aerospace companies with uh, counterfeit components. So, uh, in this presentation, we're going to talk about the several players in the supply chain. So, uh, to make things clearer, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, describe all the acronyms that are going to be used uh, abusing this presentation here, uh, starting with the OCM. The OCM is the original component manufacturer. Uh, those are the companies that design and manufacture uh, electronic components. Uh, we're talking about Xilinx, Altera, Freescale, uh, all these companies, Intel, all these companies that, uh, you know, they make the real, they have the intellectual property and they make the component uh, to be available to other companies to make phones, computers, etc. cetera. Uh, the franchise distributors are the companies that the OCMs engage to sell their components. Uh, and they have um, this relationship with the, OC, with the OCM, so they get components directly from the OCM's foundries. Uh, these franchise distributors can be the players you've seen, you've known them, Avnet, DigiKey, uh, Future. So those are franchise distributors directly from the OCM. Uh, the franchise distributor is going to provide uh, the uh, contract manufacturer, is gonna provide the OEM, the original equipment manufacturers with components they need to make the devices they manufacture, uh, computers, phones, tablets, etc. right? Uh, the independent distributors are uh, the, uh, the actuate in what we call the gray market. Uh, so they don't have a relationship with the OCM. Uh, what these uh, ideas or independent distributors do is they market uh, components that have uh, uh, come to them from excess purchases. So the contract manufacturer, for example, um, doesn't need all the components uh, they have. So they have this excess inventory and independent distributors buy, you know, they go ahead and buy this inventory, they stock it. And then if you need those components, they'll go ahead and supply back to you. Uh, brokers, in, uh, on the other hand, uh, act similarly to independent distributors, but they don't have any inventory. Brokers are, uh, you know, your typical middleman. They are, uh, you know, you call them, you see you need component one, two, three. They're gonna have, they're gonna go ahead and call independent distributors, franchise distributors, and everybody else they know, to see if they can find component one, two, three. And when they find, they make that connection and make some money in that uh, exchange. And then uh, aftermarket, aftermarket manufacturers are companies that have a relationship with the OCM. They're authorized by the OCM to make components that are obsolete or components that uh, the OCM, for any reason, uh, uh, doesn't uh, want to make anymore. So uh, in this uh, value chain, there are several opportunities for counterfeit components to be uh, injected. So what's going on? Uh, over the past 10, 15 years, the amount of counterfeit components has been continuously increasing in the market. Um, we have se uh, military platforms that have been required to uh, stay operative longer than um, originally planned. Uh, and as a result, more and more obsolete components are required. These obsolete components are very expensive, which gives the counterfeiters an incentive to fabricate them. Uh, DOD budget cuts over the years have also uh, reduced the amount of these platforms that can be redesigned. And as a result, they have to be kept alive. And as a result, more counterfeit components come in because more obsolete components are needed. And 
uh, the level of sophistication of the counterfeiters has also increased. Over, uh, you know, in the past we could easily detect a counterfeit component. Nowadays it's getting harder and harder, which means technology like X-ray inspection is getting more and more of a requirement uh, if you are in the supply chain to make sure that components you're buying or selling are uh, authentic. And uh, we've seen quite a bit of uh, uh, remarking, so uh, commercial components being sold as military. In the past, we could say that a lot of the counterfeit was uh, restricted to the military and our space. Nowadays, it's everywhere. We're talking about medical devices, automotive, every uh, single opportunity these counterfeiters have to make a buck by selling something that's cheaper than what it's supposed to be, they'll make the buck. So some common misconceptions in this market, uh, counterfeit, you know, counterfeit components, oh, it's not going to happen to me. It's a one in a thousand risk. Not true. It's a quite a bit of counterfeit components out there, even from, um, um, uh, suppliers that think they are selling good stuff, right? But because of the way the supply chain works, for example, if, you are, if a contract manufacturer has excess inventory and that inventory is mixed with good and bad components, uh, uh, that contract manufacturer can ship back excess inventory to a, a franchise or authorized distributor who might end up with uh, mixed uh, inventory that they can then uh, resell if they're not checking for counterfeit uh, components. So it, the risk is everywhere. And if you want to make sure you don't have it, you have to check uh, what you buy and sell. Only bad distributors sell counterfeit components. Unfortunately, that's not true. Again, you have to check, right? Um, uh, we've seen good distributors who try to do the right thing end up with counterfeit components. Uh, because for the most part, they don't know they have counterfeit components, but when they check, they, they assess that they do have uh, bad components in their inventory. Another big misconception is only very expensive components are going to be counterfeited. Who's going to buy counterfeit capacitors or, you know, cheap components? Again, not true. Uh, the Department of Commerce had a report uh, stating that over 60% of the counterfeit parts are actually less than $10 each. So it's everywhere, including, you know, small items and very inexpensive components. And finally, I don't have to worry about the counterfeit component because, you know, I'll put it on my board and if it doesn't work, well, if it's counterfeit, we're just going to, um, you know, we're just going to go ahead and, and reject the whole board. Well, there's the cost of it, having the, the whole board. Uh, electrical test is also very limited because... Uh, you have, for example, die shrink or other uh, components that have limited functionality but still can pass the electrical test. So as a result, we highly incentivize, we highly advise for a very complete counterfeit detection program that can find, um, you know, find issues. Uh, one test is not going to find all counterfeit components. Uh, visual inspection alone, X-ray inspection alone, electrical test, uh, X-ray fluorescence. None of these tests alone will uh, find counterfeit components. What you really need is a program where all these tests are present, especially visual inspection and X-ray, so that based on those findings, it can assess if the component is good or bad. The challenge here is that you can never say... It, you can't authenticate a component, right? You can't say for sure that, oh, that component is legit, is authentic. You can't. Only if you can trace back that component to OCM and say, oh yeah, that component left Freescale, you know, five weeks ago and still I'm still holding it. You can't. What you can do with a counterfeit detection program is to rule out that it is a counterfeit, right? And what you can say is I've done everything I can. This is the procedures that I used and... As far as I can tell, it's not a counterfeit. Now, going back to that misconception, remember, uh, only expensive parts are counterfeited. Well, that's the Department of Commerce report that I was telling you about, showing you uh, the distribution of uh, pricing versus population of uh, counterfeits found. And uh, I'm going to drive your attention to this uh, left side of the distribution where you, know, you see components under $10, uh, having 
the largest growth of uh, counterfeit presents. So it's everywhere, and it, it's one of those things, right? They're criminals, and they will prey on our ability to inspect and our attention span, right? If we are paying attention on expensive items, they're going to have, oh, oh, they're not looking at inexpensive items, so let's find a way to counterfeit those. And let me show you an example here what we're talking about, right? Uh, do you see anything wrong with these caps? So this is an actual case uh, that uh, happened to one of our customers. And the caps looked beautiful. They all look exactly the same, wrapped with the same plastic uh, label and um, all marked 100 microfarads with 35 volts. And this is what happened uh, to their boards, right? Let me play it again so you can see the cap exploding. So there you have it, the cap to just pop, right? When it was uh, powered on the board. So we're gonna go back to this ex example in the next few slides, but I just wanted to show you that uh, the fact that only expensive parts are counterfeited is not true. S low cost, electrolytic caps are counterfeited all the time, even ceramic caps. So why is this problem happening, right? Why do we have so many counterfeit components out there? So there's quite a bit of uh, surplus stock that is made available to uh, brokers and to the gray market. Which, which, what that means is that some of those components might be copied, right? They may be taken as a template to make counterfeit components. Uh, we're also sending huge amount of scrap electronics overseas, right, for recycling. And we're gonna see how that is, ends up uh, generating counterfeit components. Uh, components are made of obsolete faster and faster, so they create this market of obsolete components that get really expensive because there's limited in the supply chain. And then if you add the need uh, for uh, short delivery times and cost reductions, uh, you end up you know, needing things faster, you need them uh, uh, you know, they, they are not manufactured anymore, and you need the cheapest one available. Guess what? That's a perfect formula for counterfeiters to uh, get into the supply chain and provide you with bad components. So this is one example of a photograph taken uh, of a, an operation overseas where this individual is, you know, look, uh, taking uh, electronic components with this hot air gun here uh, from this print circuit board. So uh, the components are removed, uh, put in these little bins, and uh, they are the pads and leads are strained, they're cleaned and remarked, made them resold back uh, in the market. Uh, as we discussed before, uh, where those counterfeit kind of components come from, uh, this is that same Department of Commerce report uh, that showed us the distribution of where counterfeit kind of components are coming from. And as you can see, brokers are the biggest offenders with most of the uh, counterfeit components uh, in the supply chain, followed by independent distributors. But not far behind, you have contract manufacturers, right? The guys who buy components from a bunch of sources that might end up mixing good and bad components in their inventory. Remember, like we talked before, even OEMs, original uh, equipment manufacturers, even authorized distributors, right? Because they might take that inventory that's mixed with bad components back from their contract manufacturers. And if they are not checking, they might put those components back into their inventory and sell to the next customer. So these, the, 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 the message here is that counterfeit, counterfeit components are ubiquitous threat to the supply chain. They're everywhere and they uh, can be uh, expensive components, inexpensive components. Counterfeit is have increased um, the level of sophistication to meet the awareness in the market now for, uh, you know, since we're looking, they're getting more sophisticated. And the only way to avoid having counterfeit components on your plant, on your inventory, is to stay a step ahead and to check everything that's coming in or out of your, um, of your uh, facility. So what are we going to do? Uh, we like to show this, uh, 
We like to show this approach uh, to find uh, fight counterfeit components as a tiered level uh, approach, starting with visual inspection when you're gonna, um, you know, you're gonna look at different uh, aspects of the package, even from shipping package, all the way to the component itself, uh, followed by X-ray and X-ray and visual inspection are critical. You have to do them. There's no other way around them. And then these other tiers is as you need, right? As you uh, get more detail, uh, you can apply decapsulation, X-ray fluorescence, do electrical test, material analysis, and other method methods. And as you go deeper into the these tiers, you can do more tests. Of course, it gets more and more expensive. Then you got to figure out who's going to pay for those tests, right? If it's going to be you, the customer, or a bit of everything of each. So. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to look at the shipping material. If the shipping material is original to those parts or if the parts have been repackaged and what is the, stats, uh, the status of those uh, boxes, right? If they are uh, damaged or, or improperly packaged. Another easy one is to check for um, labels by using a barcode scanner. Believe it or not, you've seen quite a few barcode uh, barcodes that did not match the writing on the label, right? Uh, so it's an easy one. If you find any discrepancies, definitely a red flag you got to follow up with. Uh, then the next level down, again, st still within the visual inspection uh, part of the program, the next level down is to look at uh, surface issues. So under a microscope, you have to look at the surface of, the, of these components and find out if there are any scratches or or any remnants of uh, uh, sanding on the surface of the of these components. And while the components are still under a uh, microscope, you have to look for uh, the uh, integrity of the pads. If there's any solder left on the pads like this, that's a very good indication that these components have been pulled from a board and cleaned. Uh, and then at this point, you can do some solderability tests to see if the tin finish on the, on the pads is, uh, is still there. Uh, finally, what you can do is you can do an acetone or other types of spirits and you rub on the top of the component to see if the uh, markings come off. They are not supposed to come off, but if they have been remarked, there's a good chance that they would just scrape off like the examples that you see here. Uh, in this uh, in this uh, slide, and then the overall integrity of the parts is critical. Uh, you're gonna be looking for, for example, uh, logos uh, and uh, overall markings. You can see this Altera uh, logo peeling off is not something that uh, is typical. Look at this peeling off almost completely. This is an extremely bad uh, remarking of this component. And you're going to be looking at uh, even typos. We've seen typos on the components that I assure you the LCM is not going to have a typo on their own brand. So that was visual inspection. That would be tier one. That's the least expensive uh, thing you can do. It, you know, the, the most sophisticated tool you're going to need here is a microscope, which is uh, fairly inexpensive. <clears throat> the next tier, the next level of protection you're going to have is use X-ray inspection. And I'm going to start with an overview of X-ray inspection, then we're going to get deeper on how to use X-ray inspection to find counterfeit kind of components. Let's start with what is X-ray inspection. X-ray inspection has been around for over 100 years. Uh, William uh, Rutgen uh, discovered X-rays in 1895, and... Um, uh, here's a uh, turn of the century photograph of uh, two individuals X-raying their own hands. There's an X-ray source here in this glass emitting X-rays all over the place. And some of those X-rays are going through this individual's hand. And this box that you see here is what, what uh, we call a fluoroscope. So there's a fluorescent uh, screen here that fluoresces when X-rays hit that screen. And what the individual is looking at is an x-ray of his hand through that screen. This individual here is also looking at the x-ray of his hand. X-rays come out of this glass, go through his hand, fluoresce this screen here, and he's looking at x-ray through this mirror right here on the table. So real-time x-ray, extremely dangerous, right? Because they are, you know, openly exposed to the x-ray source. We definitely don't do that anymore, but 
at the time, the uh, pioneers took a little risk. <clears throat> That's why they die young, right? Pioneers die young. So the principle of X-ray inspection hasn't changed. We use an X-ray source, an X-ray sensor, and a sample that's going to be between the X-ray source and the sensor. X-ray photons are generated in the X-ray source. They travel through the sample, and the X-rays that hit the sensor create light on the sensor. The X-rays that stop on the sample create a shadow. That's why in the old days they call an X-ray image a shadow gram. The closer the sample is to the X-ray source, the more magnification you have the farther it is from the X-ray source, the lower magnification you get. So, we're all experts in X-ray inspection. Let's, uh, let's see how we can use X-ray inspection to find counterfeit components. So, here I have a diagram of an electronic component with the lead frame, the pad, the die, that's the electronics, that's the die comes from those big wafers where they slice and take each die, and each die becomes an electronic component. The die is often wire bonded, so those are tiny gold or aluminum wires, or copper wires nowadays that connect the die to the lead frame. And what you see from the outside world are the pads and the body of the component here that's usually encapsulated in either plastic, ceramic, and some other material. <clears throat> if you take an X-ray, so that's a cross section here on the top. If you take an X-ray from the top of the same electronic component, you see the parts here. The lead frame, the die, the wire bonds, and uh, the encapsulation, it looks a little darker, and the pads are right here sticking out on both sides of the component, right? So I wanted to show you this so you can connect the uh, physical representation of the component to what the X-ray image looks like. So uh, if you look at the current uh, um, standards uh, for counterfeit detection, they all recommend uh, up to 100% inspection uh, so that you, know, you can mitigate the risk of uh, counterfeit components. And there are several methods that we're gonna explore today on how you go by finding counterfeit components using X-rays, uh, either by comparing an image with another image that you've seen before of that same component, so you can see if they look the same. Or what you can do is you can check within the same lot, so you have a thousand components, you gotta make sure if they all look the same. Within the same lot of components, if they all have the same uh, markings, right? Uh, lot code, date code, and um, uh, serial number, and uh, ID, uh, part number, they all have to look exactly the same. If there are any discrepancies, that's a massive red flag, you'd have a counterfeit component. So these are the machines we use for counterfeit detection. Uh, the Trivial Prime has been our best seller for many, many years, uh, uh, and today the market leader for counterfeit detection. Uh, people really like them because they are, um, uh, it, they're small, it's a bench top, and they're fully automated. So we can, it, it can automatically uh, inspect tubes, trays, and reels. And the reels are tested with this apparatus that we call reel-to-reel. -reel. So you place a reel of components on one side of the box of the X-ray machine, you feed the tape through the machine, and the system automatically looks at each one of the components, and then we have software that compares component to component. It tells you what are the discrepancies and what are, where are and which are the a potential counterfeit kind of components. Now, do you remember uh, that exploding electrolytic cap that I showed you earlier? Let's find out what happened. So here's the video again of the uh, exploding uh, uh, cap. Uh, that's an image, right? So it can remind you, refresh your memory of what the uh, caps look like. And here's an X-ray image showing you uh, the reference component, so a cap that had exactly the same label, right? That's how it looks on the left here, and the, on the right you have those components that exploded. And you, as you can see, they're completely different, right? Very easy to pick it up and, and roll out as, as bad components. Now, <coughs> we took a step further, right? And zooming in on the uh, leads of this capacitor, you can see that uh, the reference component has, you know, the leads are in one piece from the inside of the cap to the outside of the cap. On the other hand, those counterfeit cap uh, capacitors 
had this weld line here, right? And so what happened is those caps were removed from the board. And when you remove a, a, a cap or a component from the board, the leads are not long anymore, right? They've been cut. So they have the short leads, stubby leads coming out of the component. So what these counterfeiters do, did is to weld another lead and retain the surface. So from the outside, they look perfect. But when you take an x-ray, you can clearly see the, uh, how this component has been adulterated. Pretty cool, isn't it? Crazy. Uh, here's some other examples of counterfeit components we found, uh, starting with this Kemet uh, Tantalum uh, capacitor. Fairly expensive part. Uh, that's a reel of those components. It's showing you that they all look exactly the same with the same markings. When you x-ray, there you have it, completely different. Some of, the, some of them are low ESR caps, some are not. So they might pass electrical test, but they will very likely fail under the conditions where the low ESR capacitors have to operate at. <clears throat> to give a number of uh, how painful and expensive this problem can be, we have, we've looked at five different reels for a, it took us about seven minutes to look at all these parts, and the total potential loss for this small lot of components was almost $14,000. Another component we looked at was this SC, uh, SD RAM from Samsung. Uh, as you can see, the tape looks beautiful from the outside. In the inside, using x-rays, you can clearly see the discrepancies in, within the same reel of components, which definitely flags these components are counterfeit. If you look at this part, we looked at 3,000 components uh, with a potential loss of uh, well over $90,000. Uh, we came up with 10 different techniques, 10 different ways to find counterfeit components using x-rays. So now let's go over one by one so you can have an idea of how powerful x-ray inspection is in finding uh, counterfeit components. Starting with an em empty package. Uh, we just, if you just look at a component and there's nothing inside, well, and there's some markings on the outside, definitely a counterfeit component. We've seen uh, quite a few of them, um, especially in the early days, Empty components are easy. You can just buy them online uh, and um, you can go ahead and put them whatever markings you want uh, and uh, resell them for, you know, and hope the other, you know, the customer is not going to find them anytime soon. So anyway, if you find an empty package with markings on the outside, kind of fit component. Uh, lot and am anomaly, we used this example is pretty good. You can see a set of uh, Maxim components here and one of them is completely empty. So it's different from the others. As a result, as we, we talked before, lot uh, discrepancy are usually uh, kind of fit, um, uh, kind of fit component indication. <clears throat> then another thing you can do is you can compare those parts that you are looking at, or the x-rays of uh, image of the part you're looking at to something you've used before. But you gotta make sure that the lot code, date code, part number, uh, place of manufacturing, and index external markings are exactly the same. And I mean that because you can have a component made in Malaysia and the same component made in the Philippines, and at different places, even though it's the same part number, uh, the same company may use different lead frames, right? So when you take an X-ray uh, of the part coming from the Philippines compared to the part coming from Malaysia, those x-rays can be different and the part may be still legit. So when you compare, make sure you compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. Number four, a pinup mismatch. This is awesome because with one x-ray image, you can get a very good assessment if the component is good or bad. Let me show you how. So look at this component here, right? Now, by just looking at the pins, you can probably tell that the top left pin is power. Why? Well, it's one pin. First is on the edge, on a corn. Usually that's where people, you know, uh, OCMs put the, the power. Not only that, it's a wider trace inside the component. It has two fingers going to, uh, and multiple wire bones going to the die. So that's probably power because it needs a lot of current. Now, this pin here on the bottom right, is very likely ground. Why? Well, 
because it connects to the die and it also connects to the back of the die. The back of the die in a construction of these components, the back of the die is usually ground because you want to keep the back of the component uh, as quiet as possible. So you put this big ground plane underneath the component and you connect that to the ground plane of your board. So this component, this pin is very likely ground. This one is easy, pin 32 on the top right, it's no connect, right? It's not connect to anything here, see, it's just floating. On the other hand, when you go ahead and you overlay the actual uh, footprint, the pinout from the data sheet, you can see that there are several discrepancies, right? And by just looking at those discrepancies, you know, look at the VPP here, where it should be VDD, uh, the ground, and the no connect, right? So definitely discrepancies, and with one extra image, you can determine if your uh, if your X-ray, if your component is legit or counterfeit. <clears throat> Missing wire bonds are a very also good indication that you have an empty package or, an, or a package where the wire bonds have been removed or partially destroyed. One caveat, uh, if you're not careful, you can blast through uh, aluminum wire bonds with your X-ray inspection. So you gotta be careful if you have aluminum wire bonds and some of those power and military components you sometimes have aluminum wire bonds. Not common, but it exists. Uh, and if that happens, so if you can see aluminum wire, if you can see the wire bones, take more time, lower the power of the X-ray uh, uh, X-ray system, and give it a, a lot of try to see if you can detect aluminum wire bones. Overall, internal defects are a very good indication that uh, something happened to that component. In this example, we have a broken wire bone inside the uh, the the package. Well, that's definitely a, a, a failed part which can also indicate that it's a counterfeit because it hasn't been, uh, it's not a new component anymore. It ha might have been uh, stored incorrectly and or uh, pulled from a board and excess heat and mechanical shock created this wire bone to come loose. Uh, there are several external defects that can trigger a counterfeit suspicion. Uh, in this example, you can see an X-ray of a ball grid array of BGA, and several of the balls have been damaged. So either uh, they have been reballed improperly or pulled from a board, or they've been stored and transported improperly. For example, if they use the wrong um, uh, package or case to carry those BGAs, those balls can get damaged. So definitely uh, not new components, and they have to be rejected. When counterfeiters remove ball grid arrays from a board, uh, the balls, right, underneath the component are gone. So they have to clean it and reball it. The process of reballing is not trivial. If you don't really know what you're doing, you might end up with excess voiding on those balls. Now, a brand new BGA shouldn't have any voids, right? It's just a component and a ball of solder. So if you do see, and that's why we recommend a uh, void inspection on a bare component, which sounds kind of weird, but we found uh, bare BGAs with quite a bit of voiding, which indicates a reballing that triggers a counterfeit suspicion. Uh, another uh, example of how improper transportation and storing of the components uh, can trigger a counterfeit event to have in this example, bent pins. I mean, uh, on if you're properly storing on trays and tubes uh, your components, you shouldn't have any bent pins or uh, damaged components. They have to be pristine. The fact that you have bent pins means that at some point in the supply chain, those components have been improperly uh, uh, transported or handled, and you don't want anything to do with them. Uh, finally, excess die attach avoiding. Now, this can be manufacturing issues, right? You might have the OCM uh, causing this problem, but this can also be a result of improper storage of those components. If this, for example, if the components have been stored under uh, uh, excess humidity and temperature, uh, there might be uh, uh, water or humidity getting inside the component creating problems, right? So. This is one example where uh, the component itself might not be uh, counterfeit. However, 
Uh, if someone is selling you this part as new component, they are misrepresenting uh, issues that have happened with this component, right? And as a result, you don't want to use them on your boards anyway. So in summary, I hope this uh, video is useful. Counterfeit components are ubiquitous in the supply chain. They're everywhere and you have to be, uh, you have to protect your reputation and your products and your customers by doing a, a complete extra inspection of all components coming in and out of your, uh, of your boards. <clears throat> Good manufacturing process. Manufacturing process, of course, includes extra inspection, and in part of the process is uh, inventory control and uh, counterfeit detection. And everyone is uh, subject to uh, counterfeit components, good suppliers uh, and especially bad suppliers. So uh, audits and having uh, uh, um, and have companies in your approved vendor list is critical. But like Reagan used to say, trust but verify. If you'd like to hear more about counterfeit components and how to find them with x-rays, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 760-752-1192. Uh, go to our website, creativelike.com. We'll be more than happy to give you more details, more information, white papers. Uh, in this video, is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot, lot, lot more uh, data, information, videos we've collected over the years. We'll be more than happy to share them with you. Thank you. Quite what you want.